Hey guys, and welcome to my first video of my February series where we will be talking about love movies, romantic films, and everything in between in this month of love. As a kid, I would always wait for that final romantic kiss in a movie that would signal that these two characters were meant for each other and it was a happy ending and they will be happy for the rest of their lives. Now as an adult, I actually prefer romantic scenes that don't necessarily involve a kiss or the words I love you. So for this video, I wanted to tell you my list of favorite romantic moments that do not involve a kiss and maybe the words I love you, at least so explicitly. My first pick I call toe holding and it sounds really weird but it's from the movie Lost in Translation. If you've never seen this movie please go and watch it immediately, it's one of my favorite romantic movies and it's definitely one of those movies where nothing very explicit happens for you to know that these two characters are falling in love. So these two Americans played by Scarlett Johansson and Bill Murray, so in one scene they're kind of lying in a hotel bed together, nothing is happening, they're just talking about life and about being afraid or feeling that you're never going to find your purpose, and you know Scarlett Johansson's character just got married and she's very worried about losing herself. Bill Murray is sort of this older actor who's kind of past his prime and he can give her a lot of wise advice out of the mistakes he's made, and they're just having that midnight conversation that you have with someone you like where you just bare your soul and you get to have that real unfiltered connection with the other person. Now the reason I call it toe holding is because as they're kind of drifting to sleep Bill Murray reaches out and holds her toe and uh, she kind of stopped and actually I think she broke her toe recently so he kind of just reaches out and holds it very gently as she's already asleep next to him. And I think it's really sweet because it's so clear that they're kind of falling for each other. They're both unavailable to each other. He doesn't want to ruin the moment between them but he has to hold her in some way and I love that he picks the least attractive part of a human being. I mean, you're into whatever you're into, but aesthetically speaking, it's just a toe. There's nothing sexual about it, there's nothing flirtatious about it, but he has to hold a part of her in some way and I think it's super adorable. It lasts only a couple of seconds, but I don't know, it always kind of like I, I just find her really cute. My next choice of a scene is a not-so-secret rendezvous in the movie Almost Famous. So this young kid in high school named William has gotten a really cool gig with Rolling Stone magazine to interview a really cool band that he loves. He's at their show, he has met them, he also meets these groupies and their leader who's Penny Lane, played by Kate Hudson. And she's just this sort of mysterious, wonderful creature that he falls for immediately. So in a scene where William and Penny Lane are together and they're kind of talking, he's trying to get to know her, the the lead guitarist of the band Stillwater shows up and William introduces them thinking that of course Penny Lane has never met him and that she'll be probably a little bit starstruck because they're groupies of many rock bands. So Russell and Penny Lane shake hands, they do the whole like oh nice to meet you, you know never seen you before, but it's very clear immediately that they have met before, the handshake lingers, they kind of stare into each other's eyes. And you can also tell it's been a long time since they've seen each other. He kind of like touches her hair away and she kind of giggles and cries a little bit. It's such a touching moment where nothing relevant is said but you can tell that these characters have a history. I think it's particularly beautiful because Kate Hudson's character Penny Lane, like I said, is just very cool and mysterious and she really likes pretending to be that way, but she just can't keep her composure around Russell. She's so madly in love with him. She tries to play it off cool like she doesn't know him and, you know, be cool in front of William, but you know, she kind of like hides her face a little bit and she giggles and cries because she's so happy to see him and it's just such a genuine moment. I think Kate Hudson is wonderful in this movie. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's got a lot of really sweet and tender moments like that. My next pick is from The Great Gatsby, directed by Boss Lorman. If you've seen the movie, if you read the book, you know Jay Gatsby is like this very mysterious wealthy man, and he gets his neighbor Nick Carraway to try and set up a meeting between him and Daisy, who turns out it was his like former love. Nick is Daisy's cousin, so he invites her over to his house for some tea and coffee, where Jay Gatsby is going to suddenly show up and, you know, introduce himself, and she's going to recognize him, of course. He has gone completely overboard, there's flowers everywhere, he's just gone above and beyond for this first encounter he's going to have with Daisy in years. So Daisy's already there, he's losing his mind, he decides to just go for it, just go inside the house and let her see him and see what her reaction will be. And it's obviously part Leonardo DiCaprio's acting, but it's such an intense moment that you can tell how much this character is yearning to see her again, how much he has thought about this particular moment. So he walks in and she sees him and she's stunned and all she can say is, 
I'm certainly glad to see you again. There's no embrace, there's no kiss, there's no like clear or immensely visible shock from her. It's just her seeing this man that she loved, knowing that he's alive, that he's okay, and just being able to say genuinely that she's very glad to see him and vice versa. My next choice is from a pretty recent romantic comedy and it's called Crazy Stupid Love. In this movie, Cal and Emily have been married for many, many years and they're going through a divorce because they've kind of lost it. They've lost the magic and she has slept with someone else. They go through all the whole movie kind of hating each other and forgiving each other and maybe trying to get back together but then something happens and they fight again. So it's seeming very impossible that these two are ever going to get together. But Cal goes back to his old house where she lives almost every week to water the plants, to tend to the garden. It was his garden. So nobody knows about this. He just sneaks in. He works in the garden. And one night when he's doing that, he gets a call from Emily and he can see her from the garden. She's inside the house. Now, supposedly she is calling him because she needs instructions on how to start the heater again in the house, but he can clearly see that she's not actually trying to do that. He, she's just trying to listen to his voice. At this point in the movie, she's very angry at him and she probably doesn't want to get back together with him, but he can see her calling him just to hear him. And there's such hope in his eyes and he realizes how much he loves her and how stubborn she is that she can't just say I'm sorry. And But she still wants him around. She still wants to talk to him. And they just convey so many emotions to each other. Of, you know between the good and the bad and I think that particular moment Steve Carell's character Cal is just wonderful and it kind of always makes me cry a little bit. Next up is Forrest Gump. So as you know Forrest and Jenny grew up together they've been friends their entire lives and Jenny is a wild spirit and a troubled person and Forrest is sort of just doing amazing things with his life all the time. So after Forrest and Jenny meet in DC and they have that wonderful embrace in front of the Washington Memorial and everybody claps and after talking all night and ruining a Black Panther party so after all of that Jenny makes another terrible decision and decides to go back with her trashy boyfriend who slapped her in the face only a couple of hours ago and leave Forrest in Washington. And Forrest doesn't try to stop her. Forrest doesn't try to tell her he's a piece of crap. He doesn't try to tell her that she's damaged. He just gives her the Medal of Honor that he just won for being in the Vietnam War. It's the highest honor a soldier can receive and he's just giving it to Jenny because he says to her that he got it just by doing what she told him to do. And in that moment Jenny looks at him and says, why are you so good to me Forrest? And Forrest replies, You're my girl. And what I love about it is the look on his face. It's just like, why are you even asking me that? I'm totally in love with you. You're my girl. And it's such a sweet thing that he has no conditions for her. He's not trying to get her. He's not trying to control her. He just wants her to be happy. And if her choice is to go away and be with this guy, then he's going to support that. And that's why I think there's no better way to love someone than the way Forrest loves Jenny. He just loves her unconditionally with her, all her flaws and he knows them, but he just loves who she is. We're coming in at my very top favorite scenes ever and the next one is from my best friend's wedding and it's when he sings to her the way you look tonight. If you've seen the movie you know that Jules and Michael have been friends since college. They kind of had a bit of a fling when they were in college. She broke it up but they've been best friends ever since. They've seen each other through everything and Michael calls her one day to say he's getting married in less than a week and that's when Jules realizes that she's still totally in love with him. So she's headed to see him for the weekend and be part of the wedding but really she's trying to break the whole relationship up so she can end up with him. After a lot of awkward situations and a wonderful sing-along of I say a little prayer for you, Michael asks Jules if they can have a moment alone and he takes her on this boat trip. And in this moment together that they have, Michael is not necessarily saying goodbye but he's kind of saying goodbye to that romantic feeling that he's had for her for all this time and he tells her that she has been the woman in his life and he has been the man in her life. So they've never really been together but there is sort of a couple connection between the two of them and he has to kind of end that. Now Jules has the perfect moment to tell him that she's still in love with him, that she wants to be with him, but she doesn't dare to do it and instead reminiscing, he takes her hand, they start dancing as he sings The Way You Look Tonight. And it's really heartbreaking because you can tell he really cares for her and you can tell she's madly in love with him and she can't really say it so all you can see is her wiping her tears away while she's dancing with him and realizing how deeply in love she is with him and how she has kind of messed this up. She's had him there for so long. They could have been together if she had wanted to but she never did and now 
it's kind of too late for them. The next one comes from Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day, and is when they sing If I Didn't Care. So the character of Amy Adams, Delicia LaFosse, is this soon-to-be wonderful star who is a super upbeat, soon-to-be star of the films in the early or mid-30s, I think. Delicia has three men in her life, one who provides her a very luxurious flat, and a gig to sing at his jazz club. The second one is this very famous director, or son of a director, I think, who can get her to be a star. And the third man is Michael, who she deeply loves. And he's the one who plays piano while she sings at this club. Delicia has to decide who she's gonna pick. She picks the director, she's gonna get married to him, and of course this breaks Michael's heart. So in the party that they're celebrating her engagement back at the club where they sing, she's about to sing, Michael's gonna play the piano, she's gonna do like a really jazzy number, but he interrupts the program and starts playing a very mellow romantic song called If I Didn't Care. She obviously doesn't want to sing it, but she has no choice but to go along with it, and the lyrics kind of tell how she really feels, and she slowly accepts that she's made a mistake and she's completely in love with Michael. And it's just him sort of letting her know that you are in love with me, you do care about me, even if you've made this terrible choice. My next choice involves Tom Hanks again, and is in You Got Mail. You Got Mail is another fantastic romantic comedy at the cusp of internet and chatting and meeting people online, and while I don't find it crazy romantic, there's like one moment in this movie where it just really makes my heart sore. Everybody knows the story, even if you haven't seen this movie you know the story. Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan write to each other beautiful, witty, long emails, they fall in love over the internet, they don't know who they are, but in real life they're kind of in war for their business. So as the movie progresses, he finds out who she is, she has no idea who her platonic love is, so he kind of starts being becoming her friend, trying to talk to her about this guy who she's met online, even though he knows it is him. And in a moment, just a few hours before she's going to meet her guy, Tom Hanks asks her if she ever wondered what would have happened between them if he wasn't, you know, the guy who put her out of business and if she wasn't the girl right around the corner. And he tells her he would have asked her for her number, that he would have asked her to go for a cup of coffee or dinner or a walk for as long as they both shall live. And just that line alone, without having to say anything else, just tells you so much. And I think it's one of the most creative and just loveliest way of telling someone that you're interested in them and not for something small but like for the rest of your life. My last moment is part of the movie Pride and Prejudice, starring Keira Knightley. Pride and Prejudice has just become an icon of romance throughout history, I think, after so many adaptations. Everybody knows the story, even if you don't know it. So this one is a bit of a spoiler. I am sorry if you haven't seen it. If you don't want to, then click away, but this is really worth it. So the character played by Keira Knightley, Elizabeth, kind of hates this man, Mr. Darcy. She has a very uh, prejudiced opinion of him. Get it? Prejudice? And they kind of hate each other for the wrong reasons, but they soon realize they don't really hate each other and he's in love with her. Basically, if you've seen Bridget Jones, it's the way Bridget feels about her Mr. Darcy and vice versa. I'm very sad to make that comparison, but it's the truth. Anyway, a lot has happened. He turns out to be an incredible man who has helped her family and her sister in many ways. This is very close to the end. They meet in a field at dawn after so much has happened and he is confessing to her one last time how he feels about her. He had once told her before she thought he was just a horrible man so she didn't accept. He's telling her once again that if by any chance he she feels anything for him that he would marry her in an instant that he has completely fallen in love with her but the way he says it and the words he picks and just the intensity in his emotions is so beautiful. There's a reason why Mr. Darcy is the man every woman kind of dreams about all her life. You have bewitched me, body and soul, and I love, I love, I love you. And the fact that he has to repeat I love three times, I don't know, it's, it's like the word is not enough. And it's the most romantic moment in any movie that doesn't include a kiss, that doesn't include anything crazy or over the top. It's just Mr. Darcy with Elizabeth and it's perfection. 
So guys, that is my lengthy list of romantic moments in films that don't include a kiss. Have I missed any of them? Do you have any ones that are your favorite? Please let me know in the comment section down below. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be posting a lot of videos in February related to romantic movies, to rom-coms, to why rom-coms are not as popular as they used to be. We're just going to dive into this and talk all about it and I would love to hear your opinions as well. Have a wonderful week and I will see you in a couple of days. Bye!